Hey everybody, welcome back to night five. Tonight, as a little something different, we're drinking a little green spot. This is an Irish whiskey, as if, James, just in case you get a little bored with Jameson, or the blender's dog, there's others, and I, I approve. Lewis and I found this one time when we were in Ireland, <sighs> and I uh, still like it, and that was quite a while ago. So we're back in the um, Dust Bowl. Somebody got their arm caught in an animal trap, but for some reason didn't need a tetanus shot. Everything's fine. That's where we're picking up. People grew up hard in the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma, especially in a family without a father. Dad says if you got in a fight with someone and you just knocked him down, you'd be facing his brothers and cousins the next night. You had to hurt him bad enough to make him back off for good. I don't know what that would mean to them, but I would believe them. Daddy learned that early on. We call it Tucker Tough. And I think he's used to that principle, used that principle more than once when he dealt with unscrupulous show promoters. Hmm. I've had a lot of unscrupulous show promoters and I never thought about hitting one of them. But I might. I haven't done this as long as Tanya has. I once jokingly told a reporter I liked having grown up poor because it made a better story, but compared to the way dad and his brothers and sisters grew up, I had it good. His childhood, or lack of one, I'd go with that, made him as tough as any person I'd ever known. Anyone who's ever negotiated a contract with him, and they'll tell you, it also made him respect a dollar. Daddy hang on, hangs on to his money now, whereas mine just seems to run on down the road. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh when people act like they're not attached to that. My money, it just leaves. No, 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 you have to accept some responsibility for that. But I like that she doesn't, and she's not going to change that. It's just the way it is. I've never stuck my arm through a shed and had a trap snap down on it, but I got plenty. I, I've been plenty of places I shouldn't be and done a lot of things I shouldn't do, and I've spent a lot of my life trying to stay Tucker tough. Well, there you have it. That's a slogan. My mother's family. That's all we got to get through, and then we'll get to the other stuff. The Cunninghams, uh-oh, wild Irish people in the Dust Bowl, that won't turn out well, came from Abilene, Texas. My great-grandfather, Gid Cunningham, was Irish and Cherokee Indian. <laughs> really? Okay, Cherokee. A lethal combination when it came to drinking whiskey. You are right, Tanya. I can't even imagine. <sighs> Which he frequently did. Still, in 1937, a rancher named Roy Wasson took a liking to the family and asked Gid and them to bring them all and come work for him. Everything from cotton to watermelon and running horses and cattle. Three generations of Cunninghams moved up to Gaines County, Texas to live on the ranch and help Roy Wasson. They were Gid, his son Marion, Marion's wife, Fella, Fella, Fella Hensley Cunningham, and their eight children. The oldest Cunninghams was my mother Juanita. Well, that's not a very Irish name. Is it Cherokee? Is No. Like Juanita's not Cherokee, right? I'll have to Google that. Roy Watson was such a powerful man in the Gaines County that the town closest to his ranch was named after him. Mr. Watson wanted to, be, wanted to help the Cunninghams make a better life, and he offered him a good-sized parcel of land to my great-grandpa Gid and, 50, and at 50 cents an acre. But Gid had squandered nearly every bit of his cash that it crossed his palms on whiskey, so he had to turn down the deal. I don't really know if it's turning it down if you just don't have the money. I think that's just shit, I can't do it. Somebody else bought the property. Oil company's been leasing and drilling rights ever since, in the area since 1927, and then 1935, they struck oil! Oh, oh! Katie, bar the door! There's gonna be some liquor flying around now. The Denver Producing and Refining Company moved in and began intensive with drilling. Once that happened, and the original wells in 45-mile area still produced approximately 250,000 barrels of crude oil a day. <laughs> One-fourth of America's oil reserves were stored in the south plains of Texas, and even a few acres of land. It would have made more money. I lost my accent for a minute. The sign that once read Wasson Ranch later read, read, read Shell Oil. So thanks to whiskey and great-grandpa Cunningham, I lost the chance to be born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Not that I regret it 
In fact, I just wonder how much trouble I'd have gotten myself into had I been a billionaire oil heiress and not had to work for it. Well, I think I could probably imagine some of the trouble she would get into, I would say. Judging by what I've already read in only 10 pages, phew, this family is unhinged. Or just maybe just no discipline. Maybe just too much drinking. I love how there's always a question, though. I don't know what gets into us. We're just normal, and then we're not. I don't know. We'll see you guys tomorrow, though. We'll find out some more what these crazy Cunninghams are getting into.